So uh, Treasury had to take some pretty dramatic actions um, this week in terms of putting spending, state spending on hold. Tell us the background for that. Why did you think it was necessary this time? Well, we are, as every state in the country is seeing, um, are seeing a real uh, issue of concern with our revenues coming in. Um, clearly, the you know this is first and foremost a health crisis, and with stay-at-home orders and businesses having to take a break, um, we are seeing the effects of those declines in the economy. So. Um, you know, we are on a fiscal year. We end June 30th. We have a statutory constitutional obligation to have a balanced budget. Um, we needed to make sure that um, we will have the uh, revenues and um, uh, ability to do the appropriations we need to do while still having a balanced budget by June 30th. So we have put some money into reserve. We've notified uh, those bondholders, which was uh, part of the disclosure statement that we issued on Monday. Um, just letting them know the fiscal challenges and potential issues we're seeing here in the state. Um, and, and that's why we're, we, we have certain budgetary tools uh, here in Treasury to try and make sure that we have the uh, ability to have a balanced budget. The ability to reserve funds is one of those tools. So we are utilizing that right now. Uh, is there even any sense of when there might be clarity in terms of revenues? This is, as you said, is such an kind of a unknown situation that, that we're in. I'm not even understanding how you'll get clarity to, to get a balanced budget. Right. I mean, and, and that's especially with the delay, the federal delay in filing of tax returns um, and, and payments. You know, typically, you know, our big month is April. So we will see our, our revenues come in and we'll have an idea. We, we go to the, typically right now, we would be in budget season. We'd be, we'd be meeting with the legislature, going through the numbers in the budget that the governor introduced in February. Um, and then we would do a revenue update in May based on those April returns. Those returns now are gonna be pushed into uh, potentially as late as July 15th after our fiscal year ends. We're supposed to certify revenues for the next year um, on June 30th, and we won't even know what our revenues, you know, for for the current fiscal year will be likely, you know, before that time. So it makes revenue forecasting, and and again, New Jersey isn't the only one in this boat. Clearly, this is a this is a whole new world for just about anybody. I'm sure you talk to you have a lot of contacts in the financial world. Um, you know, uh, it is just uh, sort of unknown territory here. So for in revenues, yes, it clearly it's a kind of a great unknown. We're doing our best to try and figure out. Uh, legally, can that June 30th deadline be changed? Um, I think that's something that uh, people are kind of looking at. Um, you know, constitutionally, we need to have a, a, a year long budget. Um, so I, I think that's something that, that is worth exploring, whether we'd want to potentially extend the end of the fiscal year because there are so many unknowns at this point. We also now, the good news is the, the federal government, it looks like they've agreed on a, a stimulus package. We're still, they, they have, they're gonna go into session uh, you know, later today. We're still waiting to get all the details. There's um, a lot of money for small businesses, for healthcare, um, one of the issues as Treasury we, we also have, though, is sort of the uh, liquidity issue. We'll, because if revenues aren't coming in until later, you know, we'll have bills to pay prior to that date, and we need to make sure the cash on hand to be able to pay those bills. So um, there's $150 billion in there for states and locals. We need detail on how those will be distributed and how they can be utilized. In terms of paying the bills, this was a notice that went out to bondholders. New Jersey is still going to be making its bond payments, I would assume. Correct. Correct. Yeah, we're just, we need to make sure we notify them of any changes, significant material changes we see potentially um, coming up. And, you know, this COVID-19 crisis clearly is a material change to markets all over the world. And we want to make sure that uh, our bondholders are aware that we're looking at it, but that we definitely see some challenges down the road. I mean, what about uh, payments to the pension fund? That we we're, we 
fully intend to make our pension to the uh, a payment to the pension fund. I mean that that um, that is a must. Uh, we've seen the uh, damage it's done when those payments were not paid in the past. Um, that that needs to be paid. So. And just some clarity as well, with money in the general fund and in the rainy day fund in the current budget, mm -hmm. uh, the sense now is that there's not going to be enough to cover whatever potential shortfall we have. And that additional billion dollars nearly of, um, of, freeze, of freezing state's fund, uh, state spending will help make up that difference. Right. I mean, we had going into until about a month ago <laughs> or three weeks ago, we really uh, were in a, the best position we've been in in many years in this state in terms of in our rainy day fund. Um, the, uh, this obviously has blown the lid off of, of many needs. And, um, you know, we've been stressing for the past couple of years when we've gone before the legislature to present our budget. We've been trying to build this up over the years. Um, and we keep saying, you know, we need this for a rainy day. And in last year, we were told this is a rainy day last year. And we kept saying for Treasury, no, no, that's, this is not a rainy day. You know, the Great Recession is a rainy day. And the dot-com crisis in 01, that was a rainy day. This is, you know, this is a <laughs> hurricane that we're seeing now. So this is exactly the reason you want to build that surplus up. We've got, you know, roughly... Uh, 1.6 in the surplus, and that will be, um, you know, easily uh, gone uh, based on what you know we're seeing possibly coming down the pike. So we need to, you know, that is you're you're right. We that is has been a priority for Treasury. Thank God we have what we have in there, but um, it likely won't be enough. So that's why. We the other budgetary tools that we have in order to do you, do you think it's possible that you might need to revisit this and actually freeze additional state sp uh, spending beyond what you've already decided will be frozen oh uh, you know what we're going to have to look at that i mean we we have to do have a balanced budget we have to make sure our our expenditures meet our appropriations there will be some tough decisions that will have to be made just just like for you know, there are tough decisions being made in every home in this country right now, in every business. Um, New Jersey Treasury Department is going to have to make the same tough decisions, and we'll do it in conjunction, you know, with the leadership of the governor, uh, working with the state legislature. Uh, you know, we're going to, we'll, we'll get through this. We will get through this. We have a strong state, um, a productive state, uh, you know, and uh, we're a state of incredibly hard, dedicated people and workers. And, um, uh, we'll get through it. It's just, you know, the, the priority right now is making sure our department's health and everyone has the tools they need financially to get us through the, the health crisis. And then we're going to, you know, need to address the fiscal crisis that will follow, but we'll get through it. I know you and I will talk again. I thank you for your time today. Thanks, Ron. I appreciate it. Thanks.